In 2036, humanity first harnesses time travel in the so-called T4 program, and they successfully launch explorers Team A into the distant past and Team B into the distant future, both equipped with the technology to return. The team that travel back in time become separated throughout the past as their time travel device gradually breaks apart across the time stream due to unexpected changes in the current of its flow. The traveler who makes it furthest back in time survives with the remaining wreckage of his craft in semi-glaciated Antarctica near the Ross Sea around 3.6 million years BP and encounters a tribe of Australopithecus pre-humans. Immediately upon exposure to the wreckage of his time travel craft, the Australopithecus begin to become self-aware and the time traveler quickly realizes he has just set into motion the series of events that will lead to humanity's own sentience. The time traveler and the rapidly learning tribe of Australopithecus work together to collect the wreckage of his craft. The time traveler wishes to reassemble the craft and go home, and the ape men reluctantly agree to help him. However, too little of the craft is ultimately recovered to reconstruct it. As the time traveler ages, he accepts his fate as being marooned in this strange past as he begins instructing the Australopithecus tribes on the ways of the people of his own era. He teaches them the fundamentals of ethics, politics, physics, and math, and finally, on his deathbed, instructs them to construct a civilization of their own based on what they've learned, using the wreckage from his craft. The Australopithecus erect the Avenue of the Dead in Agade, the capital city of Atlantis, and institute Atlantean democracy, a form of government based on ideal number theory and participated in telepathically. Using the wreckage of the time traveler's craft in the architecture of their buildings, the Atlantean Australopithecus eventually learn how to establish a time beacon to send a message via hyperspace into the far future from whence the time traveler arrived. This message reaches the distant future at a later time even than the T4 mission had departed, at a time in our future history when time travel is becoming an emergent exploratory field. Time travelers from around the year 2500 and onward open a stationary wormhole into this past timeline and establish long-term contact with the pre-humans of Atlantis. For the next one million years or so, Atlantis serves as a hub for time travel to and from both the far future and distant past, eventually serving as a space exploration base as well. Finally, however, the quaternary glaciation cycle forms ice sheets in the North Hemisphere, beginning around three million years ago in Greenland and this causes temperatures to decline globally during the Pliocene epoch, resulting in the re-glaciation of West Antarctica and the burial of Agade. The travelers who make it back the second farthest arrive in the region of modern-day Tbilisi, Georgia, 
around 22,000 years BP. A man and woman arrive in a condition of schizophrenic hallucinations and amnesia and experience the Garden of Eden scenario while ingesting muscari there. Not long after, they encounter the early Kebaran cave culture of the Levant and instruct them on the rudimentary arts of plant medicine, introducing the mortar and pestle, and economics, introducing a cowrie shell currency, as well as instructing the nomadic cave dwellers in the fundamentals of agriculture, inventing both the horizontal pottery wheel and the vertical cart wheel, and introducing music as a means of domesticating wild animals, and teaching them the basics of metallurgy, how to make anvils and molds to pour into shape both sharp swords and plowshares. The result of this time-traveling couple's influence on these early humans was the relatively rapid disappearance of the Neanderthal culture with whom they had shared caves and from whom early man had learned burial of the dead, and the even more rapid emergence of the Natufian culture of the Levant, 14,000 until 9,500 BP. The male and female time travelers, recalled as Adam and Eve, sire offspring, and these offspring eventually interbreed with the Kebaran cave dwellers. Their descendants continue to interbreed until the end of the Younger Dryas period, some 11,700 years BP, when fragments of a comet strike and usher in a period of global warming at the beginning of the Holocene epoch. The result of this time-traveling couple's cultural influence was, ultimately, what is now called the pre-pottery Neolithic civilization, 12,000 until 8,500 BP, who erected Gobekli Tape, and even more significantly, the far more widespread megalithic Kurgan culture from around 5,000 until 2,500 BP. The fourth time traveler arrives along the Ravi River in modern-day Punjab, Pakistan, around some 5,300 BP. He instructs the primitive peoples of the region in the arts of writing and clay pottery making, inventing what will come to be known now as Indus Valley Civilization script, and drafting the city plans for Harappa City, one of the earliest to make use of complex irrigation and buried drainage systems. The fifth time traveler arrives along the Nile River in what is modernly called Egypt, around some 5,000 BP, and quickly unifies the warring upper and lower kingdoms there. He is known as Menes, the royal title enduring, Narmer, the Horus name Ne'ar, Catfish, Ma'ur, Chisel. There he establishes the basis for what we now know as Kabbalah. The sixth time traveler arrives along the Euphrates River in a town called Azupiranu during the era of the Sumerian city states there around some 2,500 BP, claiming to be the son of a gardener named Aki, 
he inculcates himself into the graces of Urzababa, the king of Kish, becoming his cup-bearer. Ultimately, however, Urzababa sends the time traveler to King Lugal Zagiisi of Uruk with a clay tablet instructing him to execute the bearer of the message. Discovering his king's treachery, the time traveler dons the title Saru, East Semitic for king, Kun, meaning appointed, claims his father was really only an adoptive stepfather and invents the tale of being abandoned in a basket of bulrushes at birth by his true mother, thus returning to Kish as Sargon of Akkad. He brings Lugal Zagaisi, his would-be assassin, in chains, deposes Urzababa, and sets about to create the world's first empire. From Kish, he then conquers Ur and E. Ninmar, Uma, Kazalu, Mari, Elam, Yarmuti, Ibla, Susa, and Barhashi. He expands east to Uta Raspashtim and west to the Anatolian city of Purushanda, unifying the entire fertile crescent between the upper waters, the Mediterranean Sea, and the lower waters, the Persian Gulf. Ultimately, he is recorded as conquering no fewer than 34 city-states, as worshipping Dagon, and as ruling from Akkad, a town built over Usu Piranu, his hometown, by transplanting the entire city of Babylon there. <laughs>